Our guest today, Laurel House, has been featured on the Today Show and E! News, is an expert dating coach and author of the brand new book, Screwing the Rules, The No Games Guide to Love. Thank you so much for coming in and sitting with me on the yellow couch. You're welcome. I like this yellow couch. Thank you. Yeah, it's very like peaceful and playful all at the same See, time. Was, okay, I Don't was going to say energetic and exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, how did you become a dating coach? I've been a prolific dater for... Mm -hmm much of my life. I've also been married twice. I was engaged a third time and proposed to nine times. Nine so, times? Nine. Yeah. Who knows what she's talking now, but, about. But that doesn't always mean that that's a good thing because clearly I didn't, I got these guys to fall in love with me mm -hmm. and I had to analyze why was I not wanting to marry them? So mm -hmm. what was actually wrong with me that I was doing? Clearly I was doing a lot of things right. Yes. But that's not what you learn from. Mm -hmm. So what am I doing wrong? So I started to just analyze myself and gave advice on YouTube and mm -hmm. then decided, you know what, people want this advice. They've been asking for coaching sessions and I, I guess this is really something. So I became a dating coach. Yeah. And, and basically screwing the rules came from my decidedly against the rules mentality in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. I started to change my own and make up my own rules which were based on circumstances as opposed to, well, this is what you do always mm -hmm. because there really isn't an always except when it comes to who pays always a I'm, man pays on the first date amen <laughs> amen and can you explain to women out there why this is so important yeah as much as i'm into screwing the rules i am a feminine feminist um i am very much into gender roles and that isn't because i am lower it doesn't mean that i can't take care of myself it doesn't mean that that i that I can do it all. I can do it all. I can take care of myself. I don't need you. You're right. But I want you. Yes. And the gender roles are more about romance and tradition than anything else. Mm -hmm. And one of the main gender roles is paying for dinner. Do you want a best friend or a, an acquaintance? Do you want a business partner? Or do you want a boyfriend that could lead to a husband? Mm -hmm. And that's where paying comes in. Mm -hmm. Women can pay in other ways later. Now, in other ways doesn't mean that she has to put out. Yes. Because that's definitely not, you don't owe him anything no. because he put a credit card down. Hear that, ladies? <laughs> dinner dinner doesn't mean the bedroom. No, it, but it can. I also say it's okay to have mm -hmm. sex on the first date, which is a whole. You do? Yes, it's a whole Why? Topic. Why? Tell me. Well, I'm so anti that it <laughs> I really I am and people say well should I have sex on the first date I don't know do you want to have sex on the first date yeah it's not up to me mm -hmm. it's not up to your religion it's not up to your parents it's not up to politics it's not up to your friends mm -hmm. it's not up to him mm -hmm. if you want to have sex on the first date if you want to have sex on the first date have it Yes. But don't do it and then, oh my God, I, we shouldn't have done that. Oh God. Oh, I and right, there are so many women who think that they want to possibly have sex on the first date. They haven't had sex in a while. Yes. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But like you said, they very well may be that girl who gets fixated. Yeah. Who just should not go down that road. It's, be honest. I, I always say first, open your mouth before you open your legs. Love that. Communicate. So mm -hmm. talk about what's your dating purpose? Mm -hmm. Are you in it to be in a relationship or are you in it just to mess around? Mm -hmm. Are we on the same purpose? If mm -hmm. we are, great. If we're not, you need to be okay with that before yeah. you open your legs. So you need to have, gather the knowledge mm -hmm. and information. And a lot of people say, well, I don't want to talk about those kind of things. But you're fine opening your legs? Come <laughs> Good. on. Fair point. Have a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable talking about things that are scary, things that are vulnerable, things that are you, then why would you not be comfortable having sex? And the other way around. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm comfortable having sex with him, but I'm not going to tell him who I really am. I'm not going to mm -hmm. get vulnerable. I'm not going to tell him my shame, mm -hmm. my weaknesses, my insecurities. Really? But you're going to expose yourself the other way? It has to be equal. Yeah. Do you find that that is one of the biggest challenges you see in dating? Women not showing up as their authentic selves? Yeah. There are a couple of things that are consistent. One of them is women have a hard time voicing their needs. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, voicing. You know, how to do it in a feminine way. So you do okay. it in a feminine way by not couching, by being direct, mm -hmm. um, authentic, loving, 
um, on purpose. And that's kind of scary. Being direct, that doesn't mean abrasive. Mm -hmm. Being direct means honest, being yeah. straightforward, um, voicing your truth. And the other is vulnerability. Women are so afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, you know, I wasn't honest with him about who I am, or I wasn't vulnerable in the first one through five dates. Well, wh why not? They don't deserve it yet. They haven't proven themselves to me. They, you know, ha I don't trust them yet. Oh, so you're going to waste your time and go out one to five to however many times putting on a front? Yeah. And then what if he falls in love with the front? Mm hmm What if he falls for the facade? And, and then, then real you comes to, out. And then guess and what? And then you feel like you're defective. Yeah. Or eventually you think, wait a second, why are my needs not being met? Why aren't we ever doing the things I like to do? Mm -hmm. We've never once gone ice skating or gone to a romance movie. Well, sweetheart, it's because you never voiced those needs. And then suddenly you're resenting him for not doing what you never told him you needed in the first mm -hmm. place. And then here's the other possible outcome. You aren't you, so you are boring and you're forgettable. Paper perfect, boring. Mm -hmm. If you're just what you think that you're supposed to be, forgettable. So in a lot of your one-on-one -on -one coaching, is that what you uncover first? The first thing who that we you really are. do is, yeah, who are you? What mm -hmm. are your core values? What do you stand for? Because I, one of the first questions I ask almost all of my clients is, would you date yourself? Mm. Would you date a guy who has all of the same issues that you have, all of your secret insecurities, all of your self-sabotaging behaviors? Would you date that guy? Most women say no. Yeah. When I say, what do you offer to a relationship? What do you bring to the table? Well, I'm hot, I'm fun, I'm... Who cares? <laughs> Is that what you want in a guy? Yeah, that's what I want in a guy. Okay, Boring. well, let's look at what you actually need. Mm -hmm. Wants versus needs, very, very different. And I use the grocery store as an analogy. Okay. So when you need to make dinner, you have, and you need to go to the grocery store, you have a list of all of the ingredients in order to make this dish. Mm -hmm. You go to the grocery store, you find all of the things on your list, and you might find something, you know, some chocolate or something in the checkout line that you also buy, fine. But you leave and you have dinner that you can make. Mm -hmm. Now, because you were on purpose, right? You had a goal. You knew you had your checklist of needs, yes. not wants, uh -huh. but needs. Got now, it. If you go to the grocery store and you're like, I don't know what I want for dinner. Let me just see what I want. So you walk around, you're like, Twinkies, that looks good. Oh my gosh, I would <laughs> love some coffee ice cream. Maybe some sourdough bread. And you're just all of these things that you want in that moment. And mm -hmm. you walk out and you do not have dinner. No. You have a stomach ache. Yeah. And this is what people are doing in dating. <laughs> yeah. oh, I want that and I want that yeah. and I want that and I want that. Well, mm -hmm. what do you need actually? Mm -hmm. What do you need in a relationship? And it's, I mean, these are basics. These are communication, um, respect, mm -hmm. admiration, loyalty. Mm -hmm. It's, th these are actual true relationship needs. And then ask yourself, am I that? Oh, I like that. Turn it on you. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Because you can't say, I expect perfection, but mm -hmm. I'm not. So, yeah. but that's okay. And what you get, you're mirroring back to you anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able to move forward with confidence. So many women go on a first date and feel like it's a job interview. Mm -hmm. And they're like, please pick me. Well, but you don't even know him. No. You don't even know if you want him to pick no. you. I, By date two, you could be horrified yes. that he uses his fork in some weird way. Right. So we go into this, but he's so hot, but he's so rich, but he's so uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, And then we have our blinders on and we don't see all of the other shit that he also is mm -hmm. until later on in the relationship, if it yeah. ends up being that way. So you need to go into that date with confidence in who you are and knowing I'm a catch. Are you? I want to know more about you. Who yeah. are you? Then you have core value conversations. And these are real substantive conversations, not just, again, the superficial bullshit yeah. that's going to give you a surface relationship. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want, fine. Yeah. But if you want something real, you have to get real. So let's talk about flirting. Yeah. Do you have any great flirting tips? You know, what's interesting about flirting, I actually take clients out and teach them how to flirt. And Wait, you do like in the field yeah. flirting training? Yeah, it's a blast. Okay. What's so interesting is almost every single client, when they walk into a bar, it's they're looking down. Oh. You know, it's they're shut down. They don't know what to say. They're waiting for a guy to come up and talk to them, but they won't look at them. Mm -hmm. So what I always say is the moment you get out of your car or whatever it is, before you enter that bar, that restaurant, that party, you are on. 
Mm. Imagine that you are on a reality television show. You are surrounded by video cameras. You're on, you're not going to be like like this walking. No, that's not interesting TV. Walk into that room and look at everyone in the eye and give them a little smile. And when you do, make them feel special. And then you reset, do it again. Do it again. Over and over. Because you're making little connections. Mm -hmm. No matter who it is. It could be a friend. It could be a guy. I'm just going to connect woman, with someone. It could be the bartender. I'm going to make mm -hmm. a connection. So you walk in. You look at everyone. You smile. And now you have, you've made an initial connection. You've said, I'm inviting you to come into my space. Mm. Then if you're sitting ordering a drink, if you're sitting waiting for friends, even if you're talking to friends, you can look over and, and smile at them again and stare for one second too long. That does not mean glare, that mm -hmm. means stare. It's this little, <laughs> short, slight smile, not like a <laughs> psychotic, but yeah. this little side smile. Mm -hmm. You want your shoulders to not be directly to them because mm -hmm. that's an aggressive stance. Okay. And it's it's a very masculine and business stance. Mm. You want your shoulders to be slightly off and your head to be slightly off also. You want to get out of the superficial conversations and actually go deep. Even when you're just flirting and talking to someone for the first time at a bar, you want to still go deep. So the way that you're going to do that okay. is you can talk to them about, so what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm a musician. Oh, where do you play? You know, I play various different theaters and I, I, last week I was in Kansas City. Oh, really? Have you, get, have you been to the Nelson Atkins Museum? I happened to live in Kansas City a long time ago, so I know something about Kansas City. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for th strings, like yeah. a spare thread in your shirt to pull. Mm -hmm. So you ask questions until there's something that you can relate to and you pull it out. Oh my gosh, do you know this museum? I do. And then you can say, isn't that architecture amazing? And then you start talking about architecture. And then why did you live in Kansas City? And suddenly you're in this deep, interesting conversation. Now, at the end of the conversation, he said, you know everything about everything. And I thought, I don't. I just selected what we were going to mm -hmm. dig into by asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. and then holding on to small details and pulling that thread because the interesting things are always in the details. Mm -hmm. And that seems like something that women have as a strength already. We're yeah. great listeners. And instead of judging ourselves in that moment if we can listen to what the other person is saying we can find those threads pull them out but oftentimes uh, women are afraid to mm -hmm. so instead they do the uh-huh 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 oh did you like it yeah it was fun fun <laughs> <laughs> who cares about fun mm -hmm. you know what was it really like even something as boring as what do you do for a living I'm an attorney oh no what do you do for a living I'm an attorney oh really what inspired you to become an attorney mm-hmm what was it? Have you, did you always want to be an attorney? Sometimes you can actually remind people of their passions mm. because you're asking why. And then they're showing up with that special part of them that yes. feels good, which yeah. then they associate you with. Exactly. Now let's talk about online dating. I see so many friends going through swiping right, swiping left on yes. Tinder, just looking at the train wrecks. If one more guy takes a shirt off, takes a cell phone selfie in the bathroom, no, guys, please stop doing that. Yeah. No one is attracted to no. that. But is there a way to navigate that? Yes. Online dating is a an entire strategy upon itself. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, first you establish your needs. Mm -hmm. You have to be honest with yourself of what you're looking for. So are you looking for someone who is hot? Okay. Is that really in the end important? Turn off the lights. Can you have a conversation with this person? Um, are, if, if you're looking for someone and your dating purpose is just to date, then mm -hmm. hot is fine. Yeah. Um, if it's just to get over an ex, hot is fine. Mm -hmm. But it's what do you actually need? Okay. Then you want to map their profile. Now this is going to be different on a dating app because you don't really have the opportunity to map. Mm -hmm. But profile mapping is basically training your eye to look at specific things on the profile. So if what's important to you really is someone who is financially secure. And it, he doesn't say how much money he makes. Chances are he's not financially secure. Not necessarily. Oh. Sometimes I used to think that too, uh -huh. but sometimes they just don't say it because they don't want people to only like them because they're rich. Good so point. what kind of career do they have? Just because there's an entrepreneur, he's an entrepreneur, 
could also be code for out of work. Mm -hmm. I've experienced this. So instead, you want to go look for other things in their profile. Where have they traveled? What kind of books have they read? What are other tells that Mm -hmm. they have money? What if you want someone who you have interesting conversation with? Okay, well, what is interesting conversation to you? Maybe go and look at their favorite things section, the the recent books that they've read, um, the places they like to go. These are things that you're going to look for that can create conversation. Mm. So you're going to map the profile, and then finally you're going to look at the photos at the end because you're not going to judge. Oh, don't look at the. Oh, don't look at the Mm -hmm. photos first. Say that to later, or else you're going to. You know, people say that love is blind, but chemistry Mm -hmm. is blinding. So if you see a hot guy and everything else is wrong, but he's so hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. You know, again, turn off the lights. Can you have a conversation? Does yep. it really matter that he's hot? Mm-hmm. So you're going to map the profile. Then you can do the initial outreach if you want. You don't have to wait for him. Okay. And the outreach has to be something that shows that you actually read the profile. So you're going to say, you know, hi. Don't say your name. You're going to say hi, you know, computer guy, whatever his code word is. <laughs> or his username is, Um, I noticed in your profile that you said that you love to cook. What was the last delicious meal you made? The last delicious meal I made was this. Mm -hmm. So you're asking a question based on the profile and then you're answering something also Mm -hmm. so that you're you're basically saying, I'll show you mine, then you show me yours. Ah, So this is my expectation. This is the type of information that I want from you. Got it. Then once you're communicating, you want to have these substantive online conversations where Mm -hmm. you're actually digging in. If he immediately says, hey, let's just go out and meet instead. Um, you can say, I, yeah, it sounds great. I'd love to get to know you a little bit better online first. Mm-hmm. And that's totally acceptable. It's totally acceptable. Yeah. If he's you not can okay call the with shots. that, screw him. Right? It's creepy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and some guys are like, well, I don't want to waste my time. Okay, well, how much time are you actually willing to put into your dating life? Mm-hmm. Because I'm putting real energy into this. Yeah. So continue getting to know him. Then ask for if, if he says, can we exchange numbers? Yeah, I'd love your number. When do you have time to talk? Mm-hmm. So you're setting that date. You're calling star six, seven to block your phone number. That's how you do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Star six, star seven. six, seven, and then their number. So your okay. number is blocked. Now, mm-hmm. the reason why you're doing that is because you don't want to have this conversation with him and you realize it is not a match and he does not agree. Yeah. And suddenly and then he you has have a your stalker. phone number and yeah, and mm-hmm. you just don't want to deal. No. So don't give him your place of business, your last mm-hmm. name, your email address until you've had that conversation and okay. you, you feel comfortable. Yeah. Then you can go on the date. What about the female profile? Is there anything that you should do on your end? Yeah, you want to stand out. Okay. So the way that you stand out is your written profile needs to be a reflection of who you actually are. Now, not all of us are writers. Mm-hmm. Um, just because you're good at something else and you have a really amazing bubbly personality doesn't know that doesn't mean that you know how to bring that out on the written page. Mm-hmm. So hire a profile writer. Oh, they exist. Yeah, I write. I didn't even know about this. Clients. And it's just it's it's someone who is going to get to know you a little mm-hmm. bit first, and then is going to help to bring you to life on paper. That's great. So it's still you. It's it's absolutely just because someone you. else is writing it doesn't mean it's not. It's you. actually more you mm-hmm. than it is if you just write it. You also don't want to do a what I'm not looking for is this and do a negative list. Oh. Or a guy, you must be this, and do a whole long list of what he must be. This is about, I'm this, do you want to come and experience this life with me? These are the amazing things that I've done. This is me at my best. So stick to only positive, express who you are, and leave it at that. And then the photos. You want to make sure mm-hmm. that your main profile photo starts at a, just below your chest. Mm-hmm. You're looking straight at the camera, and you're smiling. Guys mm. don't, you might look cool with this like coy look, mm-hmm. but that's and not- And please no duck face. No duck face, smile, <laughs> look real, smile. Yeah. Then you wanna show a full body shot for sure. Many guys okay. will not contact women if there are no full body shots because <laughs> they don't trust. Yeah. Um, something when you're dressed up and when you're super casual, if you talk about the fact that you love to go jumping out of airplanes, have a photo of you jumping out of an airplane, you know, Mm -hmm. have things. This is your visual biography. Mm -hmm. So you want the photos to show who you are, not just, I'm pretty, and again, I'm pretty, and yay, I'm pretty again. No, you don't want any other women in the photos also because men naturally compare. Even if you think that you're prettier than your friends, Mm -hmm. or well, I'm the blonde, she's the brunette, so that's good. 
you do not want to make a man compare at mm. all or wonder, wait, which one is she? Will you share with us, you don't have to, but will you share with us one of your biggest dating catastrophes? Oh, I've had a lot. <laughs> a Just lot. give us a juicy one. Just dig up something um, and what you learned from it. Okay, this is, I don't know if this is as much of a juicy one, but it's a great example as to how I learned to pre-qualify. Mm -hmm. So there was a guy online who seemed perfect and he was really hot. So I thought- Oh no, stop already. I know, we already know it's a huge yeah. mistake. He was so hot. It, he said entrepreneur was his business. I am an entrepreneur. I think I'm great with an entrepreneur. This guy could be amazing for me. We had really fantastic banter, but not for a long period of time. It was just, it was pretty short. I honestly didn't feel like putting in the effort. I just, mm -hmm. I was over it for a little bit. I was free the next night and I just, he said, do you want to go out? And I said, yes. I go and meet him at this bar and he, it's crowded. And so we decide to go elsewhere. He doesn't have a car. So I thought that's a red flag, but fine. I live in Los Angeles. You should have a car. So we drive, I drive us to another bar. We mm -hmm. sit down and order wine and I say, so you know, tell me about your job. Well, I actually am in between jobs. Okay, so entrepreneur is code word for I don't work. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been in between jobs? About a year and a half, just not motivated. He orders um, wine for both of us and then he proceeds to down his and I'm done like instantly over the date. I haven't finished my wine, I'm done. Mm -hmm. He orders two more glasses for both of us and then Oh, he doesn't have enough money to pay for it. What? So I pay and then have to drop him off at his friend's house at which oh, he's Oh, God, staying. that's just embarrassing. Yeah. He doesn't have a place to live. He doesn't have a car. And he doesn't have any money. So it ended up obviously not being a match, but he proceeded to contact me for a mm -hmm. while wanting to go out again, which obviously wasn't going to happen. I did, however, text him the next day saying, hey, thank you. It was nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we're a fit. Oh, well, that was nice. Yeah. So you laid it out for him. So that was the only thing that I did that was right. Okay. Was doing the post. And so text. you do suggest that if you go on a date and you're not happy with it, let them know. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to. If okay. you don't want to contact after. The fade fine. out's okay? The, the fade out's okay. Right. It's very common. It's easier. Yeah. Um, but if they continue to contact you, mm -hmm. then you should just say, you know, thank you so much. You're such a great guy. Mm -hmm. I just really don't feel that we're a fit, but I, you know, I wish you best yeah. of luck. Yeah, little courtesy breakup. Yeah. So for me, was it a huge, gigantic disaster? No. Um, but it was just one of those lessons. Well, we're really excited for screwing the rules. Thank you. And it's not just for people who are single. I actually mm -hmm. do a lot of coaching with people in relationships, particularly when it comes to your core values, your mm -hmm. needs, how to voice your needs, how to not lose yourself, how to get a life, because it's something that a lot of, I know I lost that in mm -hmm. relationships, and I needed this insight when I didn't know me. There's also how to break up, and oh, you know, so text, an email, phone, in person, when mm -hmm. is it okay, and how to get over it, you know, how to get out from under, over, and move on from a breakup. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, go to screwingtherules.com, pick up your copy now, or pick up one for your single friends, either way. And until next time, stay fancy, fabulous, and fun.